Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today I want to talk <clears throat> a little bit about history. And um, again, I remind you that, uh, first of all, if you like this channel, please subscribe to it. Uh, that I remind you that the transcripts, the audio, the video are available at link as lessons because I know that many of you who watch these videos are not native speakers. Uh, I think that my sort of rambling style where I don't write things down ahead of time and very often I haven't really planned what I'm going to say, it makes it much like a conversation and I think conversations are in fact the easiest kinds of material to use for language study once we've gone beyond the sort of beginner uh, brain dead, um, boring uh, learner stuff, and we want to get uh, into authentic material, then a natural conversation is easier than more formal texts. Uh, but uh, getting to history now, I love reading about history, and in fact, there were some questions here. Someone said, you know, uh, this was Stephen Fisher asked, are there any history books you would recommend or novels? Um, there were also some other comments. One person said, you know, that when I referred to the, uh, to the, you know, liberté, égalité, fraternité, you know, freedom, equality, and fraternity of the French Revolution, this person said, you know, all these revolutions were very bloody and uh, scary, and as a citizen of a former communist country, he is scared of socialist revolutions. Um, so, it all has to do with history. I love reading about history. I think history gives us a perspective. You know, we think we live in a violent time. So, in terms of reading, I would rec recommend reading Steven Pinker's book, um, something about the angel, better angels of our nature or something, where he clearly documents that society has become less and less violent, uh, literally over the last 500 years, and it's continuing to become less and less violent despite the occasional flare-ups and spikes, such as, you know, our two world wars in, in the 20th century. Um, it's interesting that very often this reduction in violence also seems to correspond to a, uh, to a reduction in religiosity. And uh, certainly, you know, some of the books I've been reading recently here for Stephen Fisher's benefit, for example, uh, I read a very interesting book uh, about which described the life of Peter the uh, Frederick the Great of Prussia and Bach. But uh, you are aware at that time that First of all, through the 17th century, that is the 1600s, uh, Europe went through a period of tremendous violence, largely caused by religion, or so it might appear on the surface. But then when you read the life of Frederick the Great, who was not at all religious, uh, but he was inspired by the sense of glory. He was going to expand the boundaries of Prussia, and uh, he was uh, someone who was you know, picked on by his father, and his father was somewhat uh, militaristic, so he was militaristic, so that there's this desire for glory as a motive for violence, which is somewhat less today, uh, but still exists, and we'll get to that. Um, if you look at, for example, right now I'm reading a book which covers the year 1848, which was the year of this, all these revolutions in Europe, and it describes uh, France in 1848, and the, the masses in France were very um, militaristic. They wanted a war. They were hankering back to the days when France, you know, conquered all these countries in Europe, spreading the revolution and so forth, so that the, the revolutionary masses of France, even in 1848, 35 years after Napoleon had been defeated, were sort of hankering for this past, this sort of nostalgia for glory. So all of that, you know, it's all, and then also I read a book quite recently on uh, the uh, the Teutonic Knights and the sort of crusading by um, mostly German but Western European column crusaders into uh, the Baltic to convert the Latvians and the Lithuanians to um, Christianity. And it's obvious when you read the wars and the battles at that time in history, uh, there was a lot of deceit, deception, lying, violence, and of course the armies would just lay waste to the countryside. And this was the pattern right throughout until very recently that the armies would live off the countryside and then kill and rape and loot at will. Uh, and today, of course, we see this violence in the Islamic government. We see um, 
you know, Russians streaming into Ukraine uh, to fight, no, they're not sure, fight for the, you know, Orthodox Church or for Russia or against uh, Obama or against whatever. But they want to go there to fight. So at some level, there is this desire, whether it be those uh, call them uh, Russian jihadists or the jihadists in the Middle East or those militaristic French revolutionaries in 1848, at some level, you have people want to fight for some strange reason, a certain percentage of them. But it's also leaders. Like, to, to some extent, Bush's war in Iraq happened because he had the power to go in there. He has all these toys, this army, this force. And so if people have power, they're likely to use it. And... Uh, and so, again, I think the more we read of history, you know, I question how much of history um, George Bush knew. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Uh, but, um, you know, you hear some of the statements from people who are aspiring leaders like Trump. Uh, you really question how much he reads. Uh, and I saw a statement of one of his advisors on foreign affairs called Page, who apparently said that Ukraine is like Quebec or something. Ukraine part of Russia is like Quebec part of Canada. I mean, there is absolutely nothing similar uh, between those uh, situations. So I, I can, I'm worried, you know, another example of sort of relative ignorance was when Putin in, as I mentioned in my previous video, announces to his vast television audience in Russia that the uh, Süddeutsche uh, Zeitung, which released the um, Panama Papers, which incriminated, implicated Putin, as well as a whole bunch of other people, was owned by, I can't remember whether it was the CIA or Goldman Sachs. I mean, he subsequently disavowed the statement and said that he was misled by his press secretary. But I, I ask myself, how can you have an environment, A, where the press secretary would say this to his president, and B, where the president wouldn't immediately say, this is absolute nonsense. It it's all comes back to this idea that it's not necessarily just history, but I think it is important for people to read, to read widely, to get a sense of proportion of what is likely, what is, you know, historical behavior on the part of people, what is likely to be the reaction. Um, so I, therefore... Uh, like reading on history. I read in different languages, even like Frederick the Great, as I said, I also was able to listen to a description of his life in Italian on Rai Due, Ale Otto della Sera. So all I can say is read widely, Stephen Fisher. Like I tend to go for, like if there are things happening in the Balkans, I'll read up on the Balkans. I'll find uh, books on that subject. Uh, I've read some histories of Ukraine, for example. I just happen to have it handy here, The Gates of Europe. Uh, and uh, even in, re like when I listen, listen to a lot of my history Polski in Polish, of course you get a sense of, of the involvement of Poland with Lithuania and Ukraine. So, um, you know, go wherever your interest takes you. When I was learning Chinese, I read a lot of Chinese history. When I first got involved with French when I was uh, only um, 18 years old, I was totally immersed in French history. So yeah, I think... There's so many books on history. And of course, if we can do them through language, so much the better. And so just follow your interests. And uh, of course, nowadays you can Google it, find it, download it onto your uh, Kindle and away you go. So thank you for listening and just another ramble. And remember, uh, you'll be able to find this uh, as a lesson, if you're learning English, uh, at Link. And you can check for the L-I-N-K link on how to get to our L-I-N-G-Q link lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.